slip on a comfortable pair of shoes, and you're right back where you started. Um, I was thinking about this group coming together the last few days, and one of the thoughts that struck me was, you know, Jesus never did anything by accident. Everything was intentional in the time that he had on this planet. And when I think about the models he gave us, he basically chose 12 guys, and he discipled them, and he walked with them for three years. And I was thinking about the impact that most of us have had the opportunity with one another. Most of us would tour for two or three years. Jesus was with those guys for three years, and then he went on and, you know, did what he did to basically set, set in motion the greatest plan of the greatest love story ever told. And we have the chance of touring, and, and, and something that I see so often is that it doesn't seem as if everyone had the same kind of connection with people that we had the opportunity by touring with one another. There's something that happened in those years, be it two years, three years, seven years, 16 years, depending on if you're Roger and Don. <laughs> <laughs> How you connected at such an amazingly deep level. And we experience something that it's really hard to describe with other people. It's, it's, a, it's an experience that we all want, we want or want our children to have. It's, it's something that's just, that goes beyond words. Because when you live with someone as closely as we did, with a common goal and a common cause, to see the king and the kingdom lifted up and glorified, it bonded us in such a way that we will never be the same for people. And I know this sounds really stuck up, but I feel sorry for everybody that didn't have that experience <laughs> in the whole world. <laughs> um, I'm reading, a, I'm reading a book right now, it's called Upended, and I wanted to share just a couple excerpts from it because it, it helped me summarize my thoughts a little bit. And it says this, questions that bring life. Let's start with a few questions. Becca graduated from college last year, last year, hungry to harness her learning and live out her faith. She wanted to serve well, wherever she could be of most use in a hurting world. But a year after graduation, she shared that the gulf between her deepest convictions and her daily life seemed to be growing ever wider. She expressed in dismay, you see all this pressing need and you hear do something, but then you graduate and you think, how am I supposed to do something from a cubicle while I'm doing pizza delivery because I can't get another job? Many of us who are 5 or 10 or 50 years down the road feel the same. No doubt we've heard that we can honor God in this ordinary task. We affirm that it's not just preachers or missionaries who can build God's kingdom that Christian conviction should invigorate all we do. But still the lofty ideals of our faith often seem utterly disjointed from what wins our paychecks and fills our weekends. We yearn for a greater integration between eternal truth and daily life, yet often feel the two remain largely disconnected. We ask with some frustration, can discipleship to Jesus Christ really make something extraordinary out of an ordinary life? And when I read that, I thought of how many extraordinary adventures and opportunities that we have. And when I see you guys come together, and I hug, and I, and I start to hear the stories, and uh, reminiscing, and just as importantly, the immediate connection that happens in a room full of people like this again. I can't help but to want to say to every one of you, you know, thank you from the bottom of my heart for the years that you gave Susie and I. And you didn't give them to us. You gave them to the Lord, and we know that. But we were so blessed and so fortunate to have you. You have marked our lives indelibly. And I think the world has been marked because of your amazing sacrifice and service and just your willingness to throw yourself at this thing with all your heart, skill, and, and listen to, you know, I mean, gosh, we were just, we were winging it as much as anybody. We were just doing our best, praying, asking God for direction, getting crazy direction, going to places like Cuba and the Soviet Union, and, you know. Joplin, Missouri. <laughs> but everywhere we went, we saw results. Everywhere we went, and the results were just as big inside of each one of you and in us as they were in audiences everywhere. And what I see so many of you going 
on to do as you continue to pursue God. You are marked so deeply that almost every one of you, and so many that can't be with us here, have still been marked and are still pursuing God with your whole heart, with your passion. And I cannot tell you the joy that that gives me. You know, I heard Bill Wilson was a guy who has the largest Sunday school class in the world. You know, and uh, he made a statement at ORU, one of ORU's chapel. He said, it's not what you do with your life that matters as much as what you set in motion with your life. Yeah. And I just believe that there has been so much set in motion because you came, because you served, because you gave, because we spent that time together. And um, the world will never be the same. My world won't. And I can't thank you enough. I'll never be able to. And, um, you know, I, I, I still sit with the address Impact Production, so I still get lots and lots of letters. We still sell about 100 DVDs a month. <laughs> <laughs> for, me. and for those of you who said, well, I can't get it, or my kids haven't seen it yet, just call the office, I'm going to say. We'll send you one, no charge, I promise. <laughs> but, and every once in a while, TVN will air it, and it, our phones just start lighting up. I mean, it's just crazy, you know? And we'll, we'll get all kinds of Facebook chatter and all kinds of things happen. But you guys have been the best ambassadors, not of me, not of Toymaker, but of Jesus. And your commitment and your sacrifice continues to show to this day. My prayer is that you're raising your families with that same crazy passion and abandonment that you had, that you're willing to go, that you will go, that your kids will go, and that you'll give them an opportunity to go to camps and to join up with other people that are doing crazy things like going out and serving the Lord and going to these isolated destinations of the world, Rio de Janeiro, wherever else we've gone. Basically share the message that Jesus is Lord. The message remains the same. And I tell you, I don't know when or how, but I believe that someday there will be some type of resurrection at Toymaker. It will probably be an animated feature next before it will tour again, but I do believe we'll see that day where it will tour again. And um, your prayers and focus and efforts towards all those things just mean the world to me. And we just can't thank you enough. Sue, did you want to say anything? No, just love you, appreciate you. It was just, as I was recently helping Cheryl with her two little ones, I was thinking, how did I do this with four on the road? <laughs> no wonder some people thought I was crazy, but I thought, what? You know, I couldn't have done it without such amazing people and examples to be around for my kids to really be blessed to be around the cream of the crop, kids that love God and were so creative. And, um, and thank you for imparting into our children in those early years. Thank you. We did say there were no rules anymore, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. She said that earlier. <laughs> no goals anymore, no yes. Yeah. Yeah. We were kind of, yeah, there were a lot of rules. <laughs> Poor Joni, yeah, 23, the curfew and rules. I mean, my kid didn't have to go through that. <laughs> Tom loosened up a lot. <laughs> so fed up one time in this Tim Co. Barton thing we were trying to do rehearsal. I pulled Roger out and I said, I wish you'd get serious about God or do something with your life. You're driving me crazy. And, and instead of just, just being a smart aleck and just saying, well, 
tough luck, old, old, old fart. <laughs> no. he, he, he just he was real sweet. He said, well, I'm sorry, what, what have I done to bother you? And that's the way Rod, that's really where Roger and I started connecting, was from that little pull out in the hall just to yell at him. Because I was like, for God's sake, I'll just get this singing over with and go home. But Roger has, you know, he, you know and something else I want to say. Um, for those of you who are a big part of the Victory Channel Cures, you know, Billy Joe Doherty passed a few years ago. And Billy Joe loved this ministry to the end. I cannot tell you what, what a great champion of faith he was. And for Sharon and, and Billy Joe's amazing sacrifice. And for those who don't know, Nancy Demas, Mike Demas' wife, who Mike had done the music for Tony Maker, Nancy passed away a couple years ago. And, and Amy, is it written down? Written down. Amy had passed away. I'm sorry. Monique Kalita. Monique Kalita passed away a few years ago as well. And um, anyway, they're they're paving the way in heaven, and um, they picked on and run their race. They ran a great race. Very proud of them. But anyway, Roger has kind of been a close friend and pastor to me for since he was a kid. Roger, why don't you come to share with me one? This is another beautiful uh, testimony. Shelly's husband, Dwayne, uh, just received this um, Facebook uh, post yesterday, was it? Yeah. This is from his friend Javier, who said, Today, Team 7 shared the gospel at Robert Newman Colegio, which was established in 1958 in Panama. Panama Panamanian students ages 15 through 18 heard the good news. Team 7 presented the gospel drama Spellbound, the toy maker and his son, to over 250 people in four presentations. Nearly 130 students asked Jesus into their hearts. We also received nearly 180 prayer requests written on 3 by 5 cards. To God be the glory, great things we've had. Isn't that awesome? That was Aaron's team that trained up. Oh, awesome. Cheryl, how many of those do we send out a year? Cheryl kind of coordinates that for us now, but how many spellbound teams? We probably have about at least 12 teams a year. 12 to 15 teams yeah. going out doing that. In the U.S. and we and some overseas every year. Victor's getting ready to go out to Peru with my daughter and my wife for two weeks. And uh, they're going to be doing Spellbound. And um, Vic's... Yeah. And his wife, too. What? <laughs> and his wife. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're really close. <laughs> we're good friends. We go way back. I just want to say, you know, um, as I think about, you know, all the years and, and uh, all of the great ministry moments and opportunities and all of the hard work, um, I've come to realize that what we did was, was something very beautiful. We had a very simple life, didn't we? We lived out of a suitcase. How many of you sometimes wish you could go back to that life? Yeah. Yeah. Right? No, no mail, no, no junk mail. Yes. Just, you know. And imagine, guys, we toured without cell phones, without any computers or internet. I just, if I had a dollar for every time we stopped at the payphone to ask for directions, I'd be so rich right now. But, um, the truth is, and I know that you, you may feel this way too, but I feel like I received way more than I gained in those years. Uh, there, yeah, there was sacrifice involved, but I can say today that I, I have been blessed with so many amazing blessings. Um, the, the fruit of lifelong friendships and relationships that are born out of this. Um, and uh, some of you know Guy Smith. You know, Guy, not, not all touring uh, ministries have the kind of stories we have. Some of them are really go bad, okay? And uh, God graced us with a really unique, uh, a wonderful opportunity. Um, I really learned what spiritual community was. And um, this 
very church was birthed and shaped uh, so much of it out of the fruit of these relationships and the story. And, and um, I remember the day that I, I stepped in to pastor this church, and after I preached my first sermon, I, I heard the Lord say, you've traded in your bus for a building. And, um, and I felt like, you know, the Lord said, it's no different, you're, you're still on the road, it's just, it looks a little different. And that's, just live like you're on the road, you know, have the kind of relationships and the depth of relationships. It's a little harder to do with 700 people than it is 30 people, but we try. But um, I want to just encourage each of you, you know, to, as we, as we look back on these years, I remember my brother told me once, when I was going to college, he said, you know, man, enjoy those years because they're the best years of your lives, you know, you ever hear that, you know, and, and, and college was great, but I'm telling you, these years, they really were some of the best years of my life, but as we all are moving into a season of life, many of us in our 40s and 50s now, some of us soon to be 60s, um, here's the thing that we have to do, we have to take the legacy because for us, it's the, the challenge for each and every one of us is, is to finish well, right? And, and the biggest question that we get to ask as we move into these years is, who are we going to invest in? The very things that we've learned and we've gleaned from, now we get the opportunity to turn around in our children and our children's children and, and those who are coming up behind us. And I, I just want to encourage you that we never have to look back at these years and go, oh, those were the glory years. They were glory years. They were awesome years. But what we do get to do is, is all of us, as Tom said, have been marked by these years. And let those years that mark you, your, your life mark someone else's life. Yeah. And, um, and that's how we know that what we've done, you know, someone once said success without a successor is not really success. And so what we want to do is mm. just as we uh, um, just continue over the, the next couple of days, I want to just encourage you um, to take time to connect and reconnect. And um, as we continue to share the stories, and as Facebook, you know, helps us out, which is a, is a, is a wonderful thing that we get to, you know, share with those who couldn't be here. Encourage one another with the, that simple reality and that, that simple truth that we have been incredibly blessed uh, over these years. And, and so um, I just want to say thank you as well. Um, I have uh, truly been blessed. Donna, I know our lives have been marked. Joel's life. Joel had uh, traumatic years coming off the road. He, he, he loved, he couldn't sleep for years because he didn't have the rocking of the bus to come to sleep. So, he yeah, has horrible sleep. So, anyway. All right. Well, um, let's just take a moment and um, why, don't we, why don't we stand together? And um, I'm going to just ask Victor and uh, who else?
Father, we thank you so much for everything that you have done in our lives, through our lives. Father, I believe I speak for all of us here. We just look forward with great anticipation to that day that we walk into heaven and we see the lives of those that our life has connected with and has impacted. You put a dream inside of, of Tom's heart to reach a sight and sound generation. And then you've called each one of us and so many others to walk alongside and to, for a season to carry that dream. And Father, I pray with all of my heart that as believers and as Christians throughout this country, around the world, that for us and, and those that we intertwine with, that we would continue to reach a sight and sound generation in whatever way that you call us to. That ministry didn't end when we got off a bus. It continues because we are sons and daughters of the Most High God. And whatever field, whatever area that you've called the people in this room to, Father, I pray that we would continue to, to reach out, continue to walk in obedience, continue to love people, continue to lay our life down for you. That's what we have done and that's what we continue to do. Father, I pray that you would bless all the families that are represented here. I know that each person has given so much to you. And your word says that as we give, it's given back to us. And I know that because of that, that we are blessed. And so just bless all of our relationships our, um, with husband and wife, with our children, with grandchildren, um, with friends and family. And um, Father, help those that are connected with us to experience a little bit of what each one of us felt on that bus. Just a sense of family, a sense of belonging, and a sense of destiny. In Jesus' name. Father, it's so amazing to realize that no matter the years, no matter the generations, so, so to speak, Father, God, all the way from China to Central America, the Caribbean, Europe, the Soviet Union slash Russia. Father, God, lives were touched. People were impacted. Communities were impacted. Father, God, a group of youngsters, families, people just wanted to seek you, make you known, Lord. Father, just surrender it all and just said, let's do this. And Father, thank you that lives were touched. Father, God, those nations will never be the same. Father God, I thank you for the stories that we do know. Stories like, like, like the two young people in Costa Rica that uh, followed us. One show after another. The third show, they give their lives to the Lord. Eight years later, I returned to find out that one of those guys is a pastor of a 700-member church. Hmm. Father, those are the ones that we get to hear this side. How many we don't know that we'll only know when we get to heaven. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for allowing us to be part of those stories. And Father, I pray blessings upon every family here. Father God, Father, for the next generation and the ones like Shelly's little boy, Father God, thank you. Thank you that the dream is very much alive. We love you, Jesus. We love you. In Jesus' name. Welcome to kind of hang our 